Hi everybody. Today we're going to be working on using place and introducing it to the kitchen setting. So today I'm not actually going to be cooking anything um, and we're going to talk about a few things before we get started. The first thing is your cot or blanket place location. Uh, here I have Ruby set up right outside my kitchen and this is where I start all of my dogs. Um, if you can see on my other side, my cutting board is right there next to my stove. So it's easy when I start introducing a dog to um, holding place or staying out of the kitchen on their placemat, uh, it's easiest for them if they're right next to the area I'm actually working. So that's my prep board. Uh, later on, I'm going to move the camera here. Later on, I move the dogs to over here, and that's where they actually hold place. Uh, that's in my living room. But when I'm first starting dogs, they're right outside my prep station, uh, right over here where Ruby's at. So we're gonna move this back to where I had it so that you can actually follow along while I work with her. <clears throat> so there she is, we can see her again. So it's best when you're introducing a dog to this behavior to have them as close to your prep station as possible so that you can begin um, treating and they don't feel like they need to get up to get closer to the reward. Your prep station is the reward zone and you need to transfer that to the cot when you're introducing them to, into your kitchen setting or staying out of your kitchen setting. Uh, the next thing is, if you're working multiple dogs, if you live in a multi-dog household, you start with one dog introducing them into this setting. Every single one of the dogs needs to have a good understanding of place. Um, however, when you start introducing distractions and you introduce that second dog, each of them is afraid the other dog is going to get the reward, and so they start breaking position repeatedly. Um, so I'm going to show you here with one dog, and then in another video, we'll introduce the rest of the dogs. <clears throat> um, so each of those dogs needs to be worked separately. Um, the treats, when you're using, when you're preparing human food, that's better than any dog treat that they're ever gonna get. And so if you start using dog treats as your reward or low value treats like kibble or things that your dog doesn't find as tasty as what might be on that cutting board or might be in that pot on the stove, you're gonna introduce a problem because they're gonna be breaking position. So use high, high value treats. In my bowl up on the uh, cutting board, I have liver, I have freeze dried raw, I have bacon bits, and then sometimes when I really am prepping a meal, sometimes I'll throw them bits of what I'm cutting up on the cutting board if it's safe for them. Like, uh, it's weird, but my dogs go nuts over kale stems. They go nuts over celery ribs. So anything that you're prepping on the cutting board is probably gonna be more valuable to them than what you've put in your treat pouch. I also uh, introduce <clears throat> or recommend getting rid of the treat pouch here. Uh, use a bowl so that they think uh, you, the dogs believe they're getting something extra special. So just put your treats in a bowl or stash them in a pile next to the cutting board so you're just randomly tossing it. They don't hear the treat pouch. They don't hear a treat bag. They don't, so you're not baiting them into um, staying there. It's a surprise. The best way to get a reliable behavior is when the reward is a surprise. <clears throat> so good understanding of this behavior before you start this video, before you start working on this session of place and uh, introducing it out of the kitchen zone, you need to, your dog needs to have a solid understanding that their placemat is high, high value. If it's not, and you introduce this level of difficulty to that training, your place behavior is going to become diluted. That means it's not gonna be as strong. So have a good solid understanding of place uh, before you introduce it into the kitchen, and uh, then you can start building on difficulty. The first thing I'm going to introduce today with Ruby is duration. So I'm just going to hover around her placemat and I'm going to drop treats on the placemat. Then I'm going to start introducing distance. I'll start walking away from it and I'll explain each of these as I do them. 
Uh, I'll start walking away from her placemat. I'll start walking toward different areas of the kitchen that might trigger her to get off, uh, like the refrigerator, the stove, the cutting board, um, things that she might want to jump off the mat for to come see what I'm doing in case I might drop anything. Um, I'm also going to start when I start introducing distractions, I'm gonna pretend like I'm getting stuff out of the fridge. I'm gonna pretend like I'm dropping something on the cutting board and you'll see that. And I might even drop something on the ground close to her mat and she needs to stay there and not dive off the mat to grab whatever I dropped on the ground. <clears throat> so let's get started. I'm gonna start working duration and hovering around her placemat. And this is the first step that you'll do. <clears throat> so here's Ruby, she's right outside the kitchen. And I'm just gonna toss bits of random treats that I have here. Yes. Don't forget to use your reward marker. Yes. Okay. Her front feet are off the mat. That one was really close to her mat. I wasn't quick enough in stepping on it. So I'm just gonna wait here. She got back on. Yes, good girl. And if your dog does that, that's okay. <clears throat> All right, so now I'm gonna start walking away from her. Yes, as she stays there, I'm gonna reward her, good girl. Now I'm going around the corner here. I'm gonna go slightly out of sight. Yes. Okay, her feet are off the mat, so I'm just gonna stand here until she chooses to get back on. Yes, good girl. I'm gonna walk farther away. Yes, good girl. My aim is really bad today. I'm just waiting for her to have all four feet back up. Yes, good girl. Okay, after you've gone through walking around, you're not gonna progress as fast as, fast as I am. So after I've walked around a lot, I might spend a few days on that. I might even spend a week on just walking away from the dog and rewarding, walking away from the dog, walking out of sight, walking toward the window before I move to this next step. This next step, I'm going to be introducing pretending to do things that I would normally be doing in the kitchen where I'd like my dog to stay out. And <clears throat> by the way, this is when your dog knows, go hop it up or go to their place. If my dog doesn't have a command, I'm probably not going to move on to this video. That's a note that I meant to uh, mention earlier. Because throughout the day, my dogs are allowed to walk through here. They're allowed to come into the kitchen. It's an avenue they use to get from one living room to the other. Right? They come through here to go check out my son's playroom. This is a, a place that they're allowed to be unless I'm cooking. So if I am preparing food in this kitchen, I tell them, out of the kitchen or go hop it up. This is out of the kitchen, over that way is hop it up. That's where their cots are. So <clears throat> just a side note there. So I'm gonna start now doing things that I would normally be doing in the kitchen and she will hopefully stay there. Yes. Yes, good girl. So this treat went off her cot. Whoops. I took too long to explain. That treat went off her cot and she stayed there. Ideally, I would have been able to have time to pick it up and give it to her, but I was a little slow with my reaction. Yes. Okay, she's back up.
doing various things over there. Now, I would sit here and pretend to eat something and reward her with food. You can, there's various things that you can do. You can get stuff out of the fridge. From here, I would probably move to getting food out of the fridge, setting it on the counter, putting it back in the fridge, rewarding her for that. Um, if you have duration and distance here, you can also prepare a small meal, like a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and sit down and eat it, and reward your dog as they stay there. <clears throat> so I hope this video was helpful to you. Uh, it's very simple to move from here. We release your dog a few times, come back, do this multiple times throughout the day, and soon you'll have enough duration and enough distance and distraction for your dog to stay there while you prepare a more complicated dinner. Have fun training.